Welcome everybody to the Pokey Battle Network. Today we're going to be taking a look at Devon Corp GG Season 1 World Championship Invitational. This is the EMEA friendly tournament. This one started well early in the morning for us NA battlers. So this was definitely catered towards more of the EU, the APAC, maybe some LATAM, maybe some NA snuck in here. But looking at all these 21 battlers that did participate in this tournament, you are seeing this wonderful collective of Pokemon showing up here in this meta. Say, for instance, Chris Celia's are popping up. We're seeing a lot of Chris Celia's, a lot of Manda buzzes here, Quagsires. Um, so, in the restricted, there were 13 restricted Pokemon that you could bring only two of. They were very OP Pokemon. Chris Celia, Manda buzz being one of them, being a repetitive favorite here. Um, and Polion popping up some more. Uh, we're seeing that we get Altaria here, we get Umbreon's popping off, Shadow Quagsire's, Greedence. So the meta ha was a definitely play what you feel like with these really good, tanky, spammy, they have their specialty ability, right? Uh, they have a specialty to them. That's why they're in the restricted Pokemon. And these battlers chose Pokemon that they felt great with. Now, if you did a quick look at PV Poke, you found out that Mandibuzz was number one, Cresselia was number two, and Cresselia has coverage on everything. Having access to Grass Knot really shut down a lot of the other restricted Pokemon because a lot of the restricted Pokemon were water Pokemon. As you see with a lot of these other teams here, you get water Pokemon as well. So Cresselia being a top notch there, making Mandibuzz the number one because it hard walls Crest. So we saw a lot of Crest. We also see some Sableye and Altarias. Tons of Pokemon that battlers can play with. But we're taking a look at Leonardo 77 here because he brought Cresselia and Empoleon, but he brought the Double Dragon in Guzzlord and Gudra. Then he brought in Typhlosion Shadow and that Stunfisk. Now that Typhlosion Shadow is so good. It is so tanky. It's going to be able to, not tanky, it's so damaging. It's going to put some real good fast move pressure down. But you got to be careful because there are other Pokemon out there and Incinerate is a five turn move. We'll see how Leonardo does, though, because he's got a good lineup. This is the number one at the end of Season 1 on the leaderboard here in the Devon Corps GG world. This battler ranked number one in the whole world. So we're going to watch his Invitational run. So excited to watch this as he's going to see and battle his way to get to the World Championship. Now let's take a look at his tournament run. Taking a look at Leonardo 77's first opponent, it's going to be Trainer 1, 2, 3, and they are going to be battling it out. Trainers brought in that Crest Mandibuzz core we were just talking about, also brought in that Frostlass. Shown real promise here with Frostlass having that Ice Powder Snow um, ability against that Mandibuzz, even though Mandibuzz is against it and that Guzzlord is against it. The only thing it had to worry about was Umbreon, but there's no Umbreon here as Polly gets met with the, um, the Crest, and now it's Emp onto the Mandibuzz. So Polly swaps out. Crest has been exposed and a Dark Pulse takes that Empoleon to half health. Now this is not a Shadow Empoleon. So it's going to be able to take Dark Pulse a lot better. But it's going to be able to hurt the uh, uh, opponent a lot less. As Hydro Cannon just takes the Mandibuzz to about half health. And look at what these Steel Wings are doing. Mandibuzz knows like it's got to throw. Going to give up the shield just to get to that second aerial ace. Will this aerial ace take him out? Oh no, I apologize. It's another Dark Pulse there. Going straight for the KO, and look at that. The Incinerate farm almost all the way down, but the Snarl goes through as a Dark Pulse takes him to about the Deep Yellow. Now he's got Thunder Punches for that water Pokemon. That's the beauty of having Thunder Punch. It's kind of like a great way to protect your fire when they're like, oh, I'll bring my water Pokemon against it. Now this uh, uh, Polyrath is going to throw an Icy Wind onto Cresselia, and Cresselia on Cresselia action. A Moonblast is going to come through. There is no shield left on the opponent. No debuff off the Moonblast. So we'll have to see how he's going to play it out as another Moonblast goes off. No debuff again. So we're going Moonblast for Moonblast. Now remember, this is a debuff Moonblast on our side of Leo's. He was debuffed by the Poly in the back. So we'll have to find out what he's going to do. Is he going to just wait for the Switch Clock to keep that shield? As a second Moonblast takes him to the deep red. He leaves with tons of energy too. With a shield left, the Incinerate goes through two Incinerates, and you have that Thunder Punch. Beautiful call. The Thunder Punch comes out, 
and right onto the poly too. He saw this swap and was like, no, I'm not going to undercharge. I'm going to undercharge. He's not going to kill this so that my crest can at least get some damage down. And can he get to the moon blast? Is it going to be enough here in game one? Yes, it is. Leo making us bite our nails for it. He's going to lead the Typhlosion into the poly for game two. This is round one of a five rounder. Leo here on top of it. The Thunder Punch again, showing why it was so good to add for Typhlosion. Typhlosion, the only pure fire in this meta that was allowed. Almost had to feel like the Rainstorm or Zodiac when it was Rapidash and the Incinerates got to those drill runs and you got to those uh, Flame Charges, got to play around with the, the Rapidash. It was awesome. That being said, here we go again, seeing Fire do what Fire does and take away the shield of the opponent. Now, with one shield on his side, it is the Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz is going to have to see now the Moon Blast. See Leonardo going to just start steel winging. A Dark Pulse will take him half. We saw what it does. We know what it does. He's got the energy. Here he goes. Hydro Cannon is enough. No shields left. He's got Drill Pack on this thing as well. You know, after Empoleon got that Steel Wing, it's been nothing but a beautiful Pokemon to play with. And with shields and now another Hydro Cannon because Steel Wing's been so good. Water's just showing why it's so good. Maybe make Blast Burn 40 energy, please. Good Lord, as a Moon Blast gets shielded, another Hydro Cannon will come through and this will take the matchup for sure. Now, you've got to play game three because um, in this tournament, you have to find out, like, if you tie 4-1, you have to have the best winning record. So playing game three is good. It looks like game three was forfeited to Celio, so we didn't get the footage there. Going on to game round two now against Jester. Again, rocking that Glade. They really like the Glade, but he also brought in Lapras. <laughs> We're going to see some cute Lapras. Let's go. Lapras with the Ice Shards has access to Ice Beam, um, Skull Bash, and Surf. So left with tons of energy and back comes a Cresselia. We know what Cresselia can take and not take and it takes it to the half health and now Crest on Crest. And man, oh man, this mirror matchup is so tiresome. But when you have a Hydro Cannon go through to knock your opponent's Crest down to half health, you're feeling real good. Still no debuffs are happening off these Moon Blasts. So we'll see what's going down. Another Moon Blast. No. There it is. The energy. The throw. Will he give up a shield to protect the Cresselia? Nope. Gonna let it go. And now the Mana Buzz shows. Just to bring in that Mana Buzz Crest Core with a Lapras. Let's get spicy. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. We saw Walrein and Celio in the Restricted. And you know what? They beat Lapras. After that, nothing else beats Lapras like that. This Water Ice Pokemon tank is here for those dragons. And it's a double dragon team. So clearly, this is a great place to play Lapras if you're playing it. This is what I love about these metas and what Devon Core is providing because they bring battlers to play with their style as another Hydro Cane is going to be built up and take this Mandibuzz down to deep nothing. We still don't know. We still haven't seen the third Pokemon. And Jester understood the game. Just going to forfeit and go with two shields holding on to it. And we're getting Empoleon into the Mandibuzz here in game two. This is round two of a fiver again. We are already both 1-0. and oh, So we'll have to see what happens. As we know what a Hydra Cannon does, where it leads to, we've got it down. Hydra Cannon, half of Mandibuzz's health. Moving on. Here comes another Hydro. Mandibuzz is almost KO'd. Give up one shield and you can farm down. A Dark Pulse though is going to KO. Now he's got options here. I believe a Psycho boat Cut won't be able to go all the way down. He might have to forfeit a Dark Pulse. That's why he brings out the Mana Buzz. Or the Guzzlord there. Because those Dragon Tails are just as hard to have hidden. With Dragon Tail meeting the Stunfisk. Finally, the Unova Stunfisk are coming out. Big core breaker here for this Steel Crest. The Steel Water Pokemon that's coming out with that. And Polion as well. Also with those Flyers too. So... Here comes a charge move of darkness, a brutal swing, and that's a brutal hit as Dragolgi comes in and Dragon Tails down. We're going to get the 
Grass not thrown here. Get the first shield. What a call by Leo. Understanding that this is the Dragalzi. They're saving the shields for this Pokemon. It doesn't have much damage. It's got a great bait move opportunity. What's his opponent going to do? Double bait Aqua Tail. That's mostly him. You know he's got to get the three more Dragon Tails. And this is Cycle Cup versus Dragon Tail. A two versus three move. So can he get to the energy? And he does. Before the third Dragon Tail comes through to get to that next Aqua Tail. And that's going to wrap it up for game two. We're going to get into game three. Because like I said, you know, you could be 2 0. -oh, but so can your opponent, and your opponent can be 6-0, and you have lost one. So don't want to do that. You want to be as many wins as you can in this tournament. Got to play game three. That's what uh, the whole season's been about. It's so much fun here in these Swiss. Playing these Swiss as an outrage comes flying through, and what a call. This Swiss Army Knife Dragulge is a great choice here, but unfortunately, Leo knows how to play against it. An Aquatel bait call, and he KOs that Dragulge before he can get the next Aquatel off. Steel Wing proving its value here as a two-turn move. The Snarl, we've seen it again, taking it to half health. Remember, there were two extra taps that, uh, that he had prior to the Mana Buzz. That's why it wasn't at the yellow yet. But with the Steel Wings now lighting up to almost two Hydro Cannons, another... Oh my goodness! Hydro Cannon is baked and a catch is made. Incredible play, but he brought the Lapras. He goes, nah, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Nah, uh, uh, did he call it? Was this the play? Chester's so good with this move, so good with the opportunity. There is no shields here as a Skull Bash is gonna KO and gonna boost up the defense of this Lapras. Lapras now have to take these Steel Wings. Look at this Drill Pack gonna come through. If I was Jester, I'd be shielding, right? Absolutely, Lapras almost had another move and trying to make the catch. Jester holding on to the energy, so good. But unfortunately, Crest had the count ready and a little more to go. With that, no extra energy will be thrown. And we're gonna say GG's to Jester as C. Leonardo's gonna go 2-0 with a 6-0 run right now. This is incredible. Dark Phoenix here next to his opponent, bringing the Altaria and the Sableye. Also rocking Gallade, brought a Guzzlord as well and brought the Rock Crodilly. So that Rock Crodilly will be good, but the weaknesses is Steel, and this Steel Wing is just proving to be so valuable for C. Leonardo here. This tournament is really, really hurting from Steel Wing. Building up the energy to Hydro Cannon and Drill Peck at the same time. Both 40 energy so quickly. And against these Empoleons that don't have counter. The big point of uh, Empoleon doing so well as well is that there's no counter user here. This uh, Polyrath can try so hard all at once. But the fast move damage isn't there. And it's got to take a while to build up to that dynamic punch. Sitting at 55 energy. And there it is to KO that Empoleon. But in comes Crest and swaps immediately the Dragon Claw, or Dragon Tail doing more damage to the 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 Sableye there than Shadow Claws. As a Dragon Claw does go through, Return does go through. Both battlers holding on to the shield, but it is that Guzzlord, that thickness that is going to just spam off the energy. Yes, he knew. You know, Brutal Swing ain't gonna be that much, but he gets the second Dragon Claw now. This has to get shielded, not going to get shielded, and Crest with all the help will take game one. Going into game two now, and it is the Cresselia meeting its own Guzzlord. Immediate swaps into the Empoleon. Guzzlord going to throw that crunch. Crunch is just as big as a uh, Brutal Swing and gets the debuff too. What a hit. Look at that, a drill peck goes through and another drill peck going off onto the Altaria. Altaria now in the deep yellow. Remember, swapped in, now the Altaria is kind of locked in this position and he can build energy and swap out of Cresselia. We'll find out what Leo does. He's going to take a Moonblast, no debuff in the eyesight. Can he sit comfortably and not to worry about a catch here as he's going to farm up a little bit of energy. Tapping away ferociously. Now it's Guzzlord on Guzzlord. And look at that. His opponent Guzzlord has less health than his Guzzlord. So he's going to shield. Because you know what? That Dragon Tail move is so huge. And it's... Oh no! 
It's Gallade, and Gallade is not known for its health, folks. It is not known for its HP. As a matter of fact, the Dragon Tails are just going to hurt this thing so aggressively. That shield has to come out. That Dragon Claw is ready. And it's a close combat, too, which drops the defense. So there we go. The Guzzlord comes in, and the Guzzlord secures the round three gotta play game three we haven't seen gudra yet i like this play let's lead it off double dragon with empoleon let's see how it goes now we are 3-0 in a five rounder here leonardo is doing wonderful showing us why he is the number one in this season here being meticulous with his energy throwing it perfectly making the right counts and bringing in the pokemon when he needs to bring it in as the Guzzlord takes out the Altaria and chunks down this uh, opponent's Guzzlord. That's not what uh, Dark Phoenix wants to have happen as the Empoleon is in the back. It is the Gujra, so this was a good play to force out the third Pokemon as it is going to be the Sableye. Sableye is going to take some Hydro Cannon. So my apologies, going to shield it, then going to take some Hydro Cannon. There we go. Boom! Then swap out to the Dragon Belt. The Dragon's going to take that return. But guess what? Gudra can take a hit. And Celio knows it. So going to farm it down. We're going to get a little bit of visual lag here in the third game of this 2-0 matchup. And he gets to the Aqua Tail. Now this Aqua Tail's not going to do it. Because Lord can stay alive. But it is going to be low enough to... Oh no. Was this enough? This isn't a brutal swing or crunch will KO. Absolutely. And uh, Dark Phoenix takes one away from C. Leonardo. That's going to be a lot of pressure on C. Leo. Or for Leo. He's got to make sure he is 3-0. He cannot afford to lose anymore. Especially if there's tires. Because if there's a four-way tie, you could be knocked out of the out, out of the competition for top eight. Here we go, Leo versus Polyzion. Oh, Polyzion, I've battled you so many. We've seen your name so many times. Another top leaderboard here, bringing in the Guzzlord. These battlers know each other, so we'll see how they're going to play it out. Oh, and that's how they're going to play it out with an immediate catch on the immediate throw. The Dragon Claw right on the real super tiny Empoleon. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. I want to take it home. I want to just hold it all night and squeeze it. It looks so adorable. As a Hydro Cannon or Drill Peck will come through, Hydro will be super effective. But so will these Mud Bombs. And you get to these Mud Bombs a lot quicker with that Thunder Shock than the Steel Wing. And here comes a second Hydro. Gets the second and final shield. And look at that with a little bit of energy banked up. He now gets to the second mud, third mud bomb and takes out that Empoleon. Out comes Frostlass and immediate swaps into his own Empoleon. And I like this call too. It is Dragon in the back, but he has extra taps onto his own um, uh, Guzzlord. So he's closer to a... Um, a crunch or a brutal swing that he would like to think and that's gonna force this frost last to throw the energy What a great play. What an under tap. Oh Polizion recognizes it in under taps trying to keep the energy on frost, but the hydro cannon comes through Back to the real tiny Empoleon. Oh my goodness. And I'm against this ginormous 242 Guzzlord Good lord, here comes that fly and move drill peck as it's gonna poke this Guzzlord right out of it. Brutal Swing's gonna get brutally shielded there and that's gonna be huge. A shield comes through here, it did not shield last time and Amanda Buzz comes in. There's the Hydro Cannon and the Amanda Buzz takes down, not to have health because remember it takes the Steel Wings and the Hydro to go to it, not just the Hydro itself. The Dark Pulse will take the Empoleon down to the deep. Now he's in the L, but he's got two Hydros ready to go and a Dark Pulse is there, but it could be, yeah, that is a Dark Pulse. He's got two and a half, all the energy and he makes a catch. That Empoleon is loaded for whatever's in the back. And look at that. Now Manibus has to forfeit all this little bit of energy. He walked away with just a bit, but he's got to get the Mud Bomb. And now it's the Guzzlord exchanged here. Guzzlord going to maybe take another Mud Bomb here. There's so much energy on Empoleon. It forces the opponent to either give up the last shield, go for the nuke here. The Crunch won't do it, but he gets the debuff. That might be the big game changer here as the debuff's going to put some extra hurt down. But immediate swaps and lose the debuff. 
There is still a shield on Polyzone. It is 1-0 in this round. Poly needs to win this matchup. The Aerials will KO the Mana Buzz, but will the will the Mana Buzz be enough? Will Empoleon have enough as he gets to the Mud Bomb? And that is crucial. The switch timer's not up, though. That might be even bigger. Who went CAP in its Polyzone? What an incredible cap. Holy moly, we're getting real watery up here. Oh, no. You play a sweaty matchup like that and you lose the lead. Oh, that's so unfortunate. And a Mud Bomb still hurts this uh, Guzzlord. Even though it has 240 health, it has only 69 defense. The Crunch is going to do the damage. Remember, he's not swapped out yet. Doesn't get the debuff and Dragon Tails down. I like this play here. Again, he can shield this Claw and just Dragon Claw, Dragon Tail all the way down with energy on his Pokemon for whatever comes back. Maybe trying to draw out that uh, Frost last two so that he can keep his uh, stun face locked in on Mandibuzz. But it looks like Mandibuzz is coming out for Polyzone. Remember, this is 1-1 one, one, round four. Winner goes to 4-0 in the round five, the final round. These two battlers are playing their hearts out here. And it is Craw Dilly to join the battlefield. That is something you'll want to see. But here's the problem. That Steel Wing is slashing through as a Grass Knot comes flying in. Takes the employee on about half health. Hydro Cannon gets the, gets the first shield. Look at what Steel Wing is doing. That's all Steel Wing damage, folks. That is Steel Wing damage. And he's going to Dragon Tail down. Will he get enough? Yes, because the Bullet Seed's a four-turn move, which allows him to get enough for a Dragon Claw. This is a great technical play. What an amazing call. Almost to a second Mud Bomb 2 with the Thunder Shock against the super effective Flying Typing. Gets to the Discharge. That's how you get to the fifth round finals, folks, with an exclamation point. Woo! Holy moly. What an incredible, incredible gameplay here. So incredible. Oh, my goodness. We're going to round five now. 5-0. Five C. Leonardo taking on Kate Cringer. It is their chance to even up the meta. They have to even up the meta here. This is it. Like, this is it. If he wins, he goes 5-0 and shows everyone why he's number one as the Polyrath is going to hit the Icy win and get the debuff. But look at that. A debuff Brutal Swing is going to come through and it's going to deal do effective on the crest. So here we are, folks. Round 5. Get out. Get excited. Oh my goodness. Can you believe it? As the crest gets to another Moonblast and KOs that Guzzlord crest down with Deep Red now. And we're just going to see some Steel Winging down, right? That's what you're going to want to do. This Valyrian Bird. This King Conqueror of this meta here. Taking the Grass Knot like a champ. Not even in the Deep Yellow yet. As the, uh, the Polyrath comes back on. And again, Poly not having that counter does not act like a fighter anymore so we're not worried about it with empoleon at all keep marrying it up because empoleon is going to come back with more energy before you can get onto the field as the gudra i apologize the other dragon that starts with the g on this team comes out to play in round five we saw it earlier in round two haven't really seen it much because it was doing so um, it was taking some big hits off of a lot of those Dragon Tails. Walks out with energy. The Simo swap in. The Icy Wind don't matter. Don't matter. Got the energy. Got the Hydro. Umbreon's in the deep red. This is looking like game one is going to see Leonardo. Leonardo gets the Guzzlord onto this Polly. And you know what? Again, without that counter, Guzzlord looking and feeling really good. Chunking away can take that. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of damage Dragon Tail does. Like, imagine that without counter. Imagine fighting that in play Pokemon. Would make Polyrath's uh, stock climb so much, or uh, Guzzler's stock climb so much higher. As Polly finally gets the final KO there. Polly gets into the Icy Wind and debuffs the Cresselia. Cycle Cuts are doing what they need to do here. Icy Wind's going to debuff. Just all it's doing is giving more energy to this Cresselia, which is huge. Which is huge because Crest now walked out, maybe no longer debuffed. 
baby. No longer debuffed as an Aqua Tail is going to wash off this Cresselia from his opponent. Shield's going to come in. A Grass Knot there. I like it. It is an aggressive shield, but at the same time, you have tons of energy and your Dragon Breath is just chunking away. A Moon Blast gets the shield. No debuff. Now they're in Aqua Tail range and all you had to do is Dragon Breath them down. There is one Pokemon, two shields, and it is the ever so ugly Umbreon of the Darkness. This restricted Pokemon was played by many po uh, battlers, and I like the call here because it's pure dark. It has a great, great play. It's just so tanky. It can be real versatile, but with Mandibuzz rocking out as well there, having that aerial ace, putting that pressure down, um, uh, it does come in as like the second place of your dark typing, but having that getting the first shield getting into grass not range because the dragon remember one shield got him so much more damage on the crest in all of this extra damage onto the umbreon that he's able to get to another moon blast with his crest again a great play here and that down goes umbreon game one to leonardo round five game one this is it folks game two right here if he takes this home it's over he brings in the stun fist and BAM! Gets the first one in! Oh sorry, that was the game! This is the third game, that was it! He just won the championship in that last one! With the exclamation points and all! Oh my goodness, here comes a discharge! BAM! The mud bomb! SPAM! This Stunfish just spammed all sorts of terrors onto so many players' teams that had it. A Grass Knot's going to KO, and here comes Typhlosion. We haven't even seen Typhlosion since round one. Oh my goodness, he's like, you know what? I've, I've missed you, Ty. I've missed you, Typhlosion. Come back out. A Crunch is not going to get the debuff. It will get the shield as we're going to calm down now, winding into the final battle here. This is just so good. A crunch again. No debuff. A drill pack is going to go off. He's going to undercharge it. Going to get the shield. Going to go for another drill pack. Thinking that it might be season one of battling back in 2019 when that kept you energy. But with the undercharge, gets two extra taps. He knows what his undercharge could do. Oh my goodness, Leo. You're just making it so interesting to watch you play over and over again. Here comes another Hydro. Oh goodness, that Umbreon's down to the deep red. And guess what? Incinerate is going to hurt. With one Thunder Punch getting the final shield, one more Incinerate. Oh no! Is that the foul play? It is, and it's enough as it's not gonna do what it needs to do. GG's. Congratulations, C. Leonardo, for taking the tournament and going 5-0. The tiebreaker wasn't a real big necessity for you, but it made it so that Lyles, Jeff, and Nine Alfie were the final two that got into the top eight for this tournament, only having 23 battlers. Incredible, incredible job by everybody. As you see that 4-1 at the end, Kate. Oh, one extra win would have gotten them in. Unfortunately, they didn't get it dubs. 3-2, so two losses. Great job for Jester staying through the whole thing. OWO for staying through the whole thing. An incredible, incredible tournament run here by Leonardo. And I hope you, the battlers, got to watch some incredible technical battle. And watching that three-turn and two-turn move used beautifully to make catches and to gather up energy. He takes his 5-0 and takes his number one seed to the World Finals here in Devin Corp's GG's. So be on the lookout for that and we're going to have that live streaming on the rebroadcast. So go check out the actual broadcast on the Twitch at Devin GG or go ahead and check out the rebroadcast here at Poke Battle Network. Congratulations to all the battlers who made it into these invitationals and took their teams and took their integrity and grit and battled it out. Appreciate all of you for your incredible, incredible season run and well done. A pat on the back. Well deserved.
Thank you all for watching the Poke Battle Network. Be sure to like and subscribe to keep up with all of Devon Corp GG's content as I'm going to be following what's going on in the offseason, what's going on with the Worlds, and where we're going to be headed to in more tournaments and more Show 6 Play Pokemon fun. Thank you all for watching, and like always, keep on battling.